Hello and welcome here to Talk MCB and welcome back to the channel for yet another video here. We've been taking a look very recently ahead at the transfer window in terms of who we're going to sign, who we're going to bring in, who we're going to let go. And this is a very, very, very important decision that needs to be made at the club this summer. And it's concerning our goalkeeper situation. Who exactly should be our number one keeper? Is there going to be an issue with Ter Stegen? What should happen with Claudio Bravo? We're going to be taking a look at both of them side by side here we're going to be comparing their performances comparing their stats and we're going to be having a look as well at what each of them have given the club and what needs to be done moving forward into next season now the most important thing to note from this is that we're not just talking about the player's ability, we're not just talking about the way they performed on the pitch, it's about attitude, it's about what they've given to the club, it's about what they can do in the future, and we're going to be taking a look at all the different angles and what exactly should be done moving forward. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go through exactly what has been said by Ter Stegen because it, is, it was his comments that a few weeks ago instigated all this talk around that. And first of all, that's one thing I want to say immediately. Ter Stegen never ever should have come out and said this at the time he did. This is an absolutely vital stage of the season for us. Our sole focus should be on the football we're playing and the games that we're going into. That should be all that's in the players' minds right now, whether we're in the Champions League or out of it. And he shouldn't have come out at this time with these comments. It always happens when you go away with a national team. Players always take it upon themselves to go and do an interview with local press and it always gets out. Ter Stegen, for me, was wrong. If he's got a problem, go to the club, go and talk with Luis Enrique, talk with the Barcelona hierarchy. Don't go and talk to the media first. He said... He said he wants to take the next step and play more. He said, the situation to me is clear. If nothing changes, we will have to talk. In football, things go very quickly. At the end of the season, I'll have played about 25 games. This is not a little, but when I return from the national team, I'll probably be back on the bench in La Liga. 25 games a season is not enough for me. The decision is made by the coach. I hope the quality I've shown recently is rewarded. Now, those were damning quotes from Ter Stegen. And it not only effect could have affected our attitude... But it also places a lot of unnecessary pressure upon Bravo's shoulders. He's got enough pressure on him as it is being Barcelona, effectively Barcelona's number one. He didn't really need these comments as well. So regardless of Ter Stegen, the player, regardless of performances, I just don't think those comments were needed at the time they were given. But let's move on to performances. So this season... I'm going to show you here, uh, Ter Stegen's got 14 appearances in La Liga uh, and the Champions League combined. He's also made six appearances in uh, the Copa del Rey, uh, which takes him to 20 appearances in all competitions this season. Um, which is interesting. I've left out the Copa del Rey stats because I think the most important ones are La Liga and Champions League because those are the big games. Those are the ones that he needs to be playing. And Copa del Rey, you know, is anybody's guess, really. So in 14 appearances, he's conceded 15 goals, so more than one goal per game. He's got three clean sheets. He makes 2.7 saves per game, and he has a pass completion rate of 87.2%. Now, it's worth noting that this boy uh, has turned 24 years old today. He's still a very, very young keeper. And it's quite clear, whenever you watch him, that there's something about him which does does lead you to believe he's got a big future in the game. There's something about Ter Stegen that does make you think he's got some potential. He's got quality. He's a bit unique in the way that he plays. And I do agree that he is absolutely perfect in terms of the way that he plays, the way that he plays his goalkeeping role for our club. He plays the ball at the back well. He's very, very good at his feet. He's outstandingly calm. He's composed. Uh, he's good at decision making. And I just think that's that's excellent. That is absolutely fantastic. What we would have judge a goalkeeper on, though, is their goalkeeping ability. And he's a good shot stopper. We saw that in the Champions League last season against Bayern Munich in particular. He made some st astounding saves. Of course, though, at the start of the season, where, to be fair, to Stegen at the start of the season, had his chance. Claudio Bravo suffered an injury at the start of the season. There was the Super Cup against Athletic, where, of course, he was caught outside of his, his area. He was lobbed in, uh, by San Jose. That was the 1-0. And, of course, then Adaris went on to score a hat-trick. It wasn't all his fault, but the 4-0 loss he was in goal for. 
And then, of course, in the Champions League, away at Roma, again, he's caught quite high and Florenzi lobs him from about 50 yards. So you're saying uh, the first time that happened at San Jose, oh, that well, would never happen again. Well, it's happened twice to Ter Stegen this season. But of course, in the way that he plays, he likes to play high at the pitch. He's a bit of a sweeper keeper. That can happen. And and I would never, you know, go go have a go at a goalkeeper for taking risks. That's what a Barcelona goalkeeper does. But at the same time, you have to exercise caution. And Ter Stegen did have his chance at the start of the season. I'm not saying he didn't take it. I'm, not, I'm just saying that he wasn't overwhelmingly convincing at the start of the season in the Super Cup, in the Champions League games at the start of the season when Bravo is out injured and when he really could have seized upon and put pressure on that spot. Now, if you come across now and look at Claudio Bravo's stats, he's made 31 appearances in the league. So only 21, uh, sorry, only 11 appearances more uh, he will have made at the end of the season than uh, Ter Stegen. He has right now anyway. Um, and obviously Claudio Brown expected to play more in La Liga games, so he'll be on 38 appearances at the end of the season. Ter Stegen will probably be on 21. He'll play the Copa del Rey final, so that takes him to 21. So there's going to be a difference of 17 games between them. Um, Claudio Bravo, 30 to 31 games right now. He's conceded 22 La Liga goals. He's got 15 clean sheets. And his saves per game is actually very, very similar to Ter Stegen's. Very similar as well. His pass completion is lower, though, but not that much lower at 84.1%. And the one thing I want to say straight away, talking about that cast pass completion... Uh, I've got no thing in admitting it. Claudio Bravo is not as good with his feet as Ter Stegen is. He's not as accomplished as a goalkeeper with his feet. He, he can play at the back, but he certainly doesn't. It's not one of his assets. Uh, but what I would say is a lot of people seem to say, well, Ter Stegen can start attacks for us. Claudio Bravo may not be as good with his feet as Ter Stegen, but he started a number of attacks for us. And he is, you know, as particularly long throws and particularly long kicks upfield. They've started counter-attacks and they have created goals. So I completely understand that Ter Stegen is better with his feet. But to say that Claudio Bravo never creates attacks, never starts attacks, is just wrong. He's not as good, but it doesn't mean that he can't do it. He's got a lot of clean sheets this season. I must say that in recent games, his form hasn't been as good as we've seen from him this season. But I would also say that there are games earlier on in this season which seem to have been forgotten. Particularly the game at the Bernabeu. It may have ended 4-0. It could have ended very differently. 4-1, 4-2 possibly. Claudio Bravo on the day absolutely destroyed Ronaldo, one-on-ones, crosses, headers, everything that day Claudio Bravo is saving. There was an absolutely vital save at the Camp Nou against Atletico Madrid, which will prove massive in the title race. Again, Claudio Bravo. And then going back to last season, there were moments there where he won us games. He won us trophies. I think back to the game of Valencia when Sergio Busquets scored the last-minute winner. It was Claudio Bravo's save from uh, from Faguli, which saved us from losing that game. There was moments from Claudio Bravo in the Clasico at the Camp Nou. There's a save from Benzema. And there's a number of occasions where Claudio Bravo has come out and he has saved us. And I think at the start of the season, when you saw Ter Stegen's possibly shaky form, there was definitely substance to say that Claudio Bravo this season is the most consistent pair of hands. He has um, the most sort of relaxed demeanour. And if you're going to pick somebody over a period of time, why not make it Claudio Bravo? No. The problem I have with Ter Stegen's comments is he's saying 25 games aren't enough. Now, if we say to him next season, OK, then you play the league games. Um, Claudio Bravo plays the Copa and the UCL. Is he going to be happy with that? I'm still not sure that Ter Stegen would actually be happy with just playing the league games because then he's going to be wanting to play Champions League. He'll probably be wanting to play Copa del Rey, possibly. And I just wonder, the way that he's saying 25 games, he's going to be playing 13 more games if he plays in the league alone. But I feel if that happens, he's still going to want to play Champions League. Because I have to be honest and say that Ter Stegen is a young player, like I said, full of potential. But last season, he was given the opportunity by us to take part in the Copa del Rey, take part in the Champions League. And at the age of 23, he's a Champions League winner. And he's a Copa del Rey winner as well. Now, that is a fantastic opportunity. And I don't really understand the feeling um, after these comments that Ter Stegen, uh, we need Ter Stegen more than Ter Stegen needs us. I don't buy that. There are plenty of young goalkeepers out there and there are plenty of world-class goalkeepers out there if Ter Stegen wants to go and play somewhere else. Now, I don't, I don't particularly uh, refrain from wanting Ter Stegen to play the league games next season. 
If that's what Luis Enrique decides, and if that's the path that we go down, I would have absolutely no problem with it. I think Bravo has done well, but at the same time, if Ter Stegen is promoted to that number one spot, I'd have no problem with it. Let's see what he can do. But at the same time, I'm not happy with this attitude. I'm sorry, as a Barcelona player, it's different than being at other clubs. We are not Real Madrid. If you said this at Real Madrid, nobody would care. Nobody would bat an eyelid. But there's a reason that these quotes that come out a few weeks ago have been so massively highlighted. This is not what a Barcelona player does. There is a player at Barcelona which is never bigger than the club. You look at players who've been here in the future, who've had big egos, and I don't think Ter Stegen's one of those. I don't think he has a big ego, I don't think he's cocky, I don't think he has an attitude problem, but I think there are certain things about him where you would say that was wrong. And I think to come out and say this was wrong, and I also think if he offers the club an ultimatum at the end of the season, I think he's in real trouble. And the way that he says, I hope the quality I've shown recently is rewarded, that sounds a bit like an ultimatum. He's going to go at the end of the season of the club and say, look, if I'm not number one, I'm off. Barcelona do not respond well to those kind of threats. We saw it with players like Ronaldinho, with Deco. If you're not in the right frame of mind, if your attitude is not there, it doesn't matter how good you are, you'll be out the door. Because there's always going to be more players for a club like Barcelona. There's always going to be players available. Now, like I say, I've got no problem at all with Ter Stegen. I see his potential. I would have no problem at all with him becoming number one next season. But at the end of the season, if I was him, I wouldn't be offering an ultimatum. I wouldn't be saying, you do this or else. Because you've got to keep proving that. You've got to then... And again, if he goes at the end of the season and he says, look, put me at number one or I leave, that puts massive pressure on him next season. And again, he doesn't need any more pressure than he's already under. He's going to be going into games knowing that he's come out and said, if I don't get number one, I'm leaving. That means I've got to perform every single game. And every mistake he makes then would be magnified. I think at the end of the season... Everybody needs to sit down. Claudio Bravo's 33, Ter Stegen's 24. Clearly there, there's a difference. But I just wonder, should Ter Stegen, he was 23 when he made these quotes, should he be a bit more patient? And I understand that he's been on the bench, if you like, for two seasons. But then how many players at the age of 23 get to play for Barcelona in the Champions League, which is regarded as the biggest tournament in football, and win it? And he gets to play Copa del Rey as well. He's played 20-odd games for two seasons in a row for the biggest club in the world. That's not so bad. For me, when you're doing that at a young age, as a goalkeeper, he's got many, many, many years to play. If you show a little bit of patience, there's no doubt that soon Claudio Bravo is going to be too old. He's going to get on. He's going to be... And we're going to use him as a second keeper. And when that time comes, Ter Stegen will make his mark on this club. But he has to have that patience. And he can't go running round calling the shots. Players don't do that at Barcelona. Barcelona will not have you with that attitude. So I've got no problem with Ter Stegen. He has potential. He's got a good, good set of skills about him that perfectly suit this club. But let's see him go about it in the right way. Let's see that talking on the pitch when he's out there. I hope he does well in the Copa del Rey final. That's going to be interesting to see. And I hope Claudio Bravo can be a really consistent performer, as he has been. And I think he deserves more respect. I really do. I think there's a lot of fans who are very much on Ter Stegen's side. And I can see that. You know, I have no problem with that. But at the same time, give some respect to a man who has been between the sticks for possibly back-to-back title wins. And that's important. Claudio Bravo has been a big part of that, like every other player. And for that reason, he deserves respect. So leave your thoughts down below guys this is a very very big issue in Barcelona a lot of fans are going to have a lot of different opinions I'm very excited to hear your thoughts on this who should start as number one next season what do you think of the comments that Ter Stegen made and also if Ter Stegen is number one what do you do with Claudio Bravo or if Claudio Bravo is number one next season what do you do with Ter Stegen let me know down below in the comments I will see you very very soon and as always thanks very much for watching but until then Vesca, El Barça. Barça.